Yes, hi everybody and welcome to yet another video. Well then, my dear friends, we have got five episodes of The Rings of Power Season 2 behind us. Fortunately, thank all the gods, but uh, there are more three to be viewed and reviewed, which means that we are past the half, and I will name this video a half season reaction or something like that. And um, I have been receiving some more messages about uh, you know, details here and there from the show, but um, there is nothing really more to be said about episodes one to five of season two, uh, as far as uh, the film craft and uh, the <coughs> faithfulness to the source material than I have already said and uttered in uh, my previous videos in the very detailed reviews of episodes 1 to 5 and also of uh, the entire season 1 that I did, what was it, like two years ago. Um, I just have to say that um, I sometimes like to look at things from different point of view and so I will now separate myself from myself. I will now separate myself from a lifelong Tolkien fan from a, a man who actually kind of traced Tolkien footsteps and I studied English and Old English at university, which of course then resulted in me discovering the uh, other part of Tolkien's life, which I dare say is um, the most prominent and dominant since uh, he started off, you know, uh, being fascinated by languages. His entire life he was a, an Oxford professor, a philologist, a linguist, and uh, a man who was very well uh, fascinated, or very much fascinated, by uh, the history and the languages and the history of languages of European countries, namely then specifically the Germanic languages, but others, others as well. And then, of course, uh, as I stated in my previous videos, not many people might know that, but um, there are a plethora of beautiful, fascinating, uh, <laughs> short, not short stories, but epic poems, alliterative epic poems in uh, the history of Middle-earth, volume 13, which I recommend you read a lot. Uh, there are poems such as The Lay of the Children of Hurin or The Story of Beren and Luthien, which then appeared in the Silmarillion as prose stories. Uh, but Tolkien's fascination in uh, the alliterative verse of uh, the old English people now that inspired me in writing my own poetry collections, which have been published in the regular, normal way in the Czech Republic, and you can get them in any good bookshop in the Czech Republic and in Slovakia. I have heard and I have received some messages and some photos from my Polish fans who also purchased these two books. Um, so I did exactly what Tolkien did. I took a modern language, uh, in his case it was English, in my case it was Czech, and uh, I used the Old English alliterative metre, precisely that metre which you can find in um, Beowulf, also uh, translated by Tolkien in one of the many translations. Not my favourite, but uh, worthy reading, worth reading nevertheless. And so I took modern uh, Czech and the old English alliterative metre and wrote um, my own alliterative poems, which follow the rules, the ancient rules as set by the uh, old English shoppers and uh, old Norse skulls and so on and so forth. And also I will try to separate myself from being a man who lives in the Czech Republic and edits and contributes into Czech versions and Czech translations of Tolkien and encyclopedias, such as this one. I contributed a part about uh, Czech translations, I corrected and I edited uh, the translation itself from French. And I will look at the Rings of Power from the point of view of a normal person who enjoys to watch TV shows, because I also enjoy to watch TV shows. The problem is I like quality. The problem is I like scripts that make sense. The problem is I like good storytelling and intriguing and grasping characters. If you build a show and write a story about bland characters with whom you cannot sympathize or empathize, for whom you can't really feel sorry or afraid, whom you can't really even hate, you just feel embarrassed just looking at the screen and the actors trying to perform a script that uh, has been put together by, I don't know, I always say a bunch of chimpanzees, but 
then people say you are insulting chimpanzees, so I will not be insulting chimpanzees. <laughs> um, if you listen to uh, a script where the characters are fascinated by bees and by eating bugs uh, that are tickling people in throats, if you're looking at elves that are all selfish bastards, which some people might point to the Silmarillion, but it's not really the same thing, is it? Um, the elves in the Silmarillion were very much different from the elves in the Lord of the Rings. They were more regal. There was definitely more more shades of grey. Uh, they definitely did some vile things. There was definitely the corruption and evil uh, among them. There was definitely uh, pompous and aristocratic behaviour. But they were not acting like uh, a, a bunch of uh, nitwits like the elves in the Rings of Power do. There was not trying to cram um, the wrong kind of shades of grey everywhere. That which is known from, for example, A Song of Ice and Fire, or many other fantasy stories, not only A Song of Ice and Fire, but Eric of Melibone, and many other fantasy stories that came after Tolkien and before him as well, thinking about the Icelandic sagas, or really the Norse mythology, but Tolkien himself was one of those writers who strictly stuck to the old romantic chivalric fight of good versus evil, which of course is very much deeply rooted in Christianity. Uh, I will not be denying that, although I do uh, not agree with the statement that Tolkien's books are strictly and purely a re re religious piece of work or art. Um, so. We can study Tolkien in depth, as I have uh, for uh, a considerable part of my life. And uh, apart from that, I mean, I I'm a connoisseur of uh, other types of entertainment. I do like good films and good TV shows. I, I, I don't pretend to be some sort of snob who only reads old English literature. No, I read, for example, comics, I mean, on a regular basis. But all these things have one thing in common if they want to be enjoyable whether we are talking about books whether we are talking about comics whether we are talking about films and tv shows or even video games or tabletop games rpg and so on and so forth the storytelling needs to be good and if the story is nearly incomprehensible if the storyline is so badly convoluted that you don't really even know what the story is about if the characters are unlikable, and in many cases, the actors are planks of wood, you can't enjoy the show. And a decent CGI effect here and there will not save it. As many people in my comment section are pointing out, if you polish a turd, that doesn't change anything, because the turd shall remain a turd. And so in 2024, I think that the way the Rings of Power looks, its visual aspect, is the norm, the way modern TV shows should look like. And so I cannot enjoy The Rings of Power for what it is, because it is quite simply not a very good show. It's a bad show. As the horse from Ren and Stimpy says, No oh, sir, I don't like it. Even if I look past my history with Tolkien and with fantasy, with the... Uh, Old Norse, Old English literature and mythology. Can't like it. Right. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And I shall see you very soon in another video. Reviewing the Rings of Power. Namariya.